Buenas noches, welcome everybody, good night, good evening, uh, good morning, I don't know, whatever you are listening to this uh, episode, wherever you are watching this episode right now, live, yes, we are live, and the reason that, uh, that, that why, why we are having this particular transmission is, well, uh, it's, easy, it's easier and it's uh, a more secure way to consume media if you're watching us uh, right, right at home, but don't worry, because we are bringing some of the most uh, talented people that we know that are from around the world, and I am so, so glad to introduce to you, uh, good uh, uh, Dr. Christopher Hasting. How are you doing, Christopher? Hey, I'm very well. Thank you so much for having me. Excellent. No, it's it's always a pleasure, and uh, looks uh, for the looks of uh, of that, you are not alone. You have a, a bodyguard uh, right behind you. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I have my protector here. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, he's not the only one who is protected. And uh, remember that we also have the rest of Romeri gang, and then we have the the good uh, night boy. How are you doing, boy? Fine, thank you. Thanks, uh, thank you all, uh, all the listeners for joining us tonight. It's gonna be pretty different as usual. Uh, trust me. <laughs> exactly, and also at the other corner we have uh, covering and protecting us from from evil. Good psychotropico. How are you doing? Hi, everybody. Uh, a pleasure to have Dr. Hastings here with us. <laughs> It would be a, a nice, a nice talk. Sure. All right. So uh, the reason why we are together in here is just because uh, we really enjoy the, the work that you have been doing lately, Christopher. You have uh, been working on. Uh, well, we know that you could have been working for a long time in different kind of projects, and then uh, they get released. So the the last, the latest that I remember reading from you was from the uh, six billion dollar man. That's right, six million dollar man. Came It out, was uh, million or billion. I don't remember which one sounds cooler. <laughs> It was it was set in the 70s, so it was still a million. All right, all right. And uh, right now, um, you are working in a comic for Valiant. Let me just check one thing because they are telling me at Twitch that in Twitch we are not having uh, we're having some image um, things, but while we're doing the recording, so I can pretty much just send it there after we are done with that. Uh, Jeff, if you are listening to this. Eh, Gif, si nos estás escuchando, eh, checa en Periscope, se debe de estar viendo. Si no, no te preocupes, la transmisión estará disponible. Eh, I am you saying the same in, in, in Spanish, eh, Christopher, that uh, if it's not available right now, don't worry, but because I will upload the, the video in here and he's giving us the sign that, okay, go ahead. So uh, right now you're, you are working with, uh, I believe that the, the world's finest superheroes, right? Oh, no, I'm so sorry. There has been a little miscommunication. It's the world's <laughs> worst superhero. Wait, what? Uh, Whoa, yeah. mercy. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, Quantum and Woody are very bad at being superheroes. Uh, <laughs> But why is that? Yeah. Uh, how, how, how do you dare to say that even when you're the writer of them? <laughs> oh, I didn't come up with them. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just following the tradition of how terrible they are. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I love them very much. I've been a fan of the World's Worst Superheroes for a very long time. They debuted in the 90s, um, and I'm just I'm just like the, the latest guy to get a crack at it. Um, but yeah, uh, Quam and Woody are their two brothers who do not get along, which is a real shame because they wound up in a mad science accident that uh, put a, a power band bracelet on each one of them that they have to clang together every 24 hours or they will dissipate into uh, meaningless energy, um, which is a real bummer if you don't want to ever see your brother again. Now you have to see him every 24 hours. The good news is, is that the bracelets give them superpowers, so they're making the best of it, and they're superheroes. Um, but, yeah, you got like a real kind of bickering, buddy cop kind of vibe to it. Um, and the, the book is a ton of fun to work on. <laughs> no, and, and, and believe me that it's a lot of fun for, for us as readers. But we also have some different questions, and let's go, I believe uh, we, we will go first with uh, Gilberto, who actually has been uh, recommending uh, these characters for quite a while in, in our regular show, and you were telling us before this uh, that you are enjoying this particular iteration, right? Yeah, there's, uh, first of all, congratulations, because I think that uh, you're doing something pretty interesting with the worst tandem of superheroes uh, mm -hmm. nowadays. Uh, when I first uh, get to know, get to know uh, Quantum and Woody, it was uh, when Priest and uh, Empty Bright were developing them. It yeah, me the too. Yeah. And, and I think it was uh, great. Uh, I was uh, commenting before, before the transmission 
that uh, uh, the dynamics were uh, not the, what we get used to read on those days. Huh? Because uh, quantum is uh, comes from a military background, and Woody is just uh, their devil, uh, and, and, uh, and I don't give them kind of guy. And along the way, uh, it kind of uh, permeated to quantum, uh, Woody's attitude, and become not the worst tandem of superheroes, but very light a team. Then the, a lot of time passed. Uh, I think it was like uh, almost 10 years, something like that, around seven, eight years. It was a long time. And, yeah, and, yeah, maybe longer than that, actually. Yeah, and uh, it, it was one of the questions they had uh, actually during the, the show, it's, uh, the, the Roller podcast. It's something that I say that I don't know how these uh, characters are not exploited the right way because they are really fun. It's what uh, readers need to, to get the, their hands on the, these days fun comic books. Then came this, the second volume, the third volume, when we, uh, that's where we see uh, the dynamics changing, uh, a little bit of uh, brotherhood enemies, uh, frenemies, something like that. How the dynamic changed because secrets were kept and uh, one became an attention whore and the other one it just wanted to get away from all this. And I was I was saying that the the third uh, the third volume, there was something missing uh, with uh, with Woody. Quantum mm -hmm. became pretty a pretty relaxed guy. And yes, I want to do what's right, uh, but I won't go fight to do what's right if uh, I I make any, any kind of sense. No, and, I totally know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, and and Woody became that really that attention whore. It's uh, the I want to be better than I want to be recognized. Uh, he turned into, if, if you don't mind me making the comparison, uh, a kind of Guy Gardner during the Justice League days in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, really yeah Woody has definitely guy. had Guy Gardner energy on occasion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a damn, this guy is obnoxious. And uh, that was during uh, Volume 3. And now that you are writing Volume 4 of, of these characters, of this uh, book, I find that it, just within two numbers, Woody is still obnoxious. Kudos to you. And, he, uh, Woody has <laughs> to be a little obnoxious. Yeah, but <laughs> he's become he's becoming more like more uh, likable character, more what he was during his uh, priest days, mm -hmm. rather than the last two volumes. Uh, are you making this uh, because you want to take the characters? in that uh, uh, precise direction, or is just something that's coming to your mind and, or I don't know, you want to make a, the turnaround between all the, the, the way they're, they are uh, acting on the, the book? Um, well, first off, thanks. I'm, I'm glad that you find that my version of Woody is likable. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, yeah, I, um, I, I really try to make um, I, I don't know. I just have an attraction to making um, unsympathetic characters just somehow wheedle their way into your heart a little bit more. Um, and so, like, Woody has always been such a pain in the ass uh, character for his whole thing. And he's always been so selfish. And he does love attention, like you said. And he's really impulsive. And he makes things go wrong. Um, but um, I really try to find the humanity in all the char characters that I work on. And it was just like, it, it didn't even occur to me to question the fact that I'm like, okay, well, like Woody's got problems. Like, how do I make you like him in spite of or because of those issues? I actually had a harder time getting hooked into Quantum because he is so much more virtuous. Um, and thankfully, we had such a long period of time like i i wrote the first issue of quantum woody over a year ago um yeah. and we were able to have such a nice long period of time of like going back and forth with the editorial and like working stuff out that we were able to like just work out all the fine details and like really give quantum a good point of view versus what woody's doing um but yeah i just um I, I I really love to take uh, 
stupid goofy comedy stuff and like really try to make it like connect with you and so woody being the character that he is that was my immediate goal i was like i need people to fall in love with woody like even though he's an asshole i need people to love him so Hmm. that was totally my goal and i'm and i'm really glad that you um got into it that's that's really great for me to hear yeah you're doing it right <laughs> All right, let's go with Siko, who is uh, who also has prepared some. Uh, I believe it was a, a zoology question, perhaps about the goat or something. I don't know. Let's go, Siko. <laughs> uh, the goat, the goat, the goat, the Vincent van Gogh. Goat. No. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, I would like to congratulate you. It's very uh, the the both numbers I have read are very good, very very entertaining. Uh, I read that uh, your editor, Peter Antos, uh, was the responsible to, te- to take you to Valiant. Yeah, uh, she was, yeah. Working with you with Gwenpool, no? That's absolutely um, right, yeah. Thank, thank goodness for Heather. And, um, I, I uh, reading the, the comics, they are just uh, like one issue, so one shots. Uh, that's the kind of uh, lecture that you are going to give us, or there is a plot thickening uh, to to those to those as the story, this story. Yeah, uh, so it is. It's both. Um, uh, I I really wanted to. I feel like a lot of comics today are written for the trade, where it's like you you know a single issue of a comic book is is merely pages one through 20 of a 120 page adventure that you are just going to get later um i really appreciate truly serialized stories and so i wanted to maybe pick up some old tips from comics the way they i don't want to say the way they used to be because i'm not the only person doing this but like an older tradition of like really giving you a full story in that monthly comic book. But I also do want to have enough little things happening that when you read them all in order, it is a full story. Um, and I actually looked at to television and how, um, tw- you know, 22 minute TV shows are formatted. Um, to give me some tips on how to do that in a more in kind of a new and exciting way. Um, because, you know, um, uh, a TV show that's 22 minutes long, you know, as they say, it's like uh, a 22 minute TV show is 22 pages of script. Well, 22 minutes or 22 pages of script is very similar to a 20 page comic book. And so I can kind of find some similar structuring stuff there for me to have uh, a beginning, a middle, and end of a story while also threading in your fun stuff that leads up to the big season finale, you know? Um, so, and that's honestly been the most fun thing for me on the story, on this book is because Valiant has been so supportive of me, like messing around with sort of slightly non-traditional, I mean, it is, it's perfectly traditional, but it's like, it's not what's in vogue right now with everybody writing for the trade. And they were very supportive of me, like really doing tight compressed stories um but yeah well also little things that are going into longer stories i've got like i've got us i've got various levels of story arcs happening <laughs> I, I feel that the that you were talking about is the personalities of quantum and goody and uh, i feel like kind of jealousy uh, with quantum again <laughs> Is that true? That's the way to attack the virtuous personality of quantum. Uh-huh. Uh, so, so you're saying that you're picking up that like quantum is like a little jealous of Woody right now? Yeah, that that That's feels. Happening. Yeah, that is totally right. Yeah, we're, so we are we're we're building that. So, gosh, we're on issue two right now. <laughs> so yeah, we are building that to. So basically, what's happening right now? Um, so for this current version of Quantum Woody, which was started by James Asmus in like 2000, I guess, 12, um, basically it breaks down that Quantum can 
generate energy shields and Woody can shoot, you know, energy beams. And that's been their basic power level. What, the earlier runs that, like, Priest was running, they had slightly more amorphous, just general energy powers. But the way it is now, it's like, Quantum makes shields, Woody shoots energy beams. Um, uh, and so I thought, like, well, what if we introduce some new superpowers into the mix? And so we have... Woody may be developing these new psychic abilities where he sort of um they're 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 more like prophecies that he gives. He sort of he he claims that he gets these psychic visions and he gives a prophecy and they show up on the scene and it turns out that everything he says turns out to be true. And Quantum is mad about this because Woody is a slacker and Quantum works so hard he's not getting the new powers. Well, Woody might be lying about his new powers, or lying might be too harsh of a word. Woody isn't maybe telling the full story with what's going on with these new powers. But Quantum doesn't know that yet, and so Quantum is just training harder and harder and harder and trying. He's like, if Woody can get new powers, I can get new powers. We're going to see that blow up into something really big uh, by the end of this four-issue arc. Here. Okay. All right. And for example, um, let, let's talk a, a little bit more about the characters. And, and well, uh, you have a, a lot of experience working with characters that have been established, but giving them different kinds of interpretations and perhaps uh, give, uh, making a mixture with previous interpretation to, to create like an amalgam, uh, not for DC, not for Marvel, not for Amalgam, amalgam Comics. In this case, it's no, no, for no, the more general, the general. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah not yeah, everything yeah, yeah. is about comics. Perhaps this show is, but nope. not that. Though but, I would have never learned that word if it were not for that DC Marvel crossover. There you are. We will learn you know? different vocabulary thanks to the funny pages. <laughs> However, yeah. one of the things that you have been mentioning uh, in this case and that, that the, the topic that Siko uh, brought is about the jealousy, the relationship that you have between these, these two brothers. And obviously it has to do a lot with the personality. But also it's the take that they have uh, uh, with the fact that they have to be heroes. And for example, initial uh, number two, uh, you have this particular discussion. I, I am showing uh, one of the pages where where you have like the conflict exploding between them because we are supposed to do what heroes do. We are supposed to be prepared. We are supposed to have a plan. And then uh, uh, you have the the, the the counterposition that is like, well, we are supposed to be incredibly public superheroes. So, so that's what we I was trying to do. Obviously, that helps us to 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 bring some uh, characteristics from the this odd couple. If uh, in this case, so how how do you deal um, with the reestablishing the, the in this case the personalities and the 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 way that they have to interact both with the story and also with the rest of the characters? Uh, sure. Well, I mean, part about an argument like this is that like uh, they're both right. Um, it's just it's uh, I've made sort of a simplification of each of their arguments, and they're just ignoring each other. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's a slightly more complex reality, um, which is like really easy to write when it's just like, well, you're you're both right. You're just ignoring each other. Um, but uh, yeah, I am. Um, I one thing that like I noticed about read like reading a lot. Of, I've read a lot of Quantum and Woody, and I noticed that like uh, previous runs have very much gotten into um, less necessarily about them being super heroes and more about them just being super powered individuals with their own problems. Like a lot of their story in previous runs has had to do with their own personal like issues, like solving the murder of their dad which led into this sort of large conspiracy with Thomas Edison and mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. And, you know, the original Christopher Priest room was a whole other crazy complicated thing. Whenever, um, you know, they weren't brothers, they were just best friends and all this other stuff. But um, uh, whenever I was, I was, you know, doing my reread for working on this again, I realized I was like, you know, we keep saying they're superheroes, but uh, I so rarely see them actually going out and, like, just saving people's lives and, like, you know, doing the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man thing, like, just, just going around and stopping burglaries or uh, stopping low-grade mad scientists or whatever. And so uh, that was a big part of what I wanted to do was, like, I was like, they have this dynamic, and we know what it is. We know they have this odd couple dynamic, 
let me just throw it against a different just superhero story every single week um or month i should say um uh and so it's like yeah our first issue is like oh they have to save congress and the second issue is like there's an attack at a public ice skating rink and our upcoming third issue is like oh there's a mystery at the old high school and then our fourth issue is like well i won't spoil it but <laughs> um <laughs> Dang. yeah sorry uh, we haven't put out any previews for that yet but yeah i just want i just want to like their dynamic is so strong and i don't think it has to be put up against their own personal origin story for 20 issues again it's been explored it's been done very well i just want to throw them against the entire everything that we know about superheroes right now i just want to see that bounce off every little possible facet of it that we can do and so that's been a big part of what we've been doing all right uh, before we go to uh, another question just uh, uh really brief uh, what you heard uh, here before, uh, uh, you heard it in here first. Um, Christopher Hastings says that uh, Quantum and Woody will be at least for 20 issues, probably 200. So we're content with that. <laughs> and uh, a very first question, because in, at least in issue two, uh, we have some mysterious dialogue. I don't want us to reveal, uh, reveal it on public. It, it can be perhaps later. Oh. However, uh, how would you describe the voice that we are hearing in some of the dialogues, these mysterious voice? Will it be like a gray oh, voice? I don't know. It's like a cavern. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, I can get into that. Um, mm. uh, so you're, you're talking about the black uh, captions. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. So the black captions with the white kind of typewriter font um, – that has been a staple of the Quantum Woody comics since the very beginning. Um, however, um, in previous runs, they were done as more of like, they were like these title cards kind of in between chapters where they would say like some phrase, like, like you know, you can't always get what you want or like, um, this is how we do it or whatever. They would just be like kind of slightly hinting at what was happening. And they were like, they were just nice little like, kind of chapter breaks and so uh i thought i would maybe treat it a little bit differently and um sort of make him kind of more like a narrator um and so it's a little bit of commentary on what's happening where they'll be like like oh no like like watch how Woody is lying. Like the the narrator box knows that Woody is lying, um, and the narrator box like sort of um, leads us through our um, page three. Um, basically, this is sort of like a theme song that you're looking at here, where it's like every issue I have this one page where um, we we kind of do this recap. But like again, I treat it very much. I treat it more like how television does uh, recaps, where I know what's happening in this particular episode, and I know what you have to see <laughs> to make it make sense. So it's like you know, sometimes like when you watch a TV show, and like they're like, previously on Westworld, mm -hmm. and like they'll they'll do a scene that you haven't seen for like a couple seasons. They're like, wait, why is that coming up? Well, here's why. So I get to use this particular page for that, but I'm also like trying to keep it really high energy and quick. So it feels a little bit more like a theme song where it's like, this is who they are. And, you know, maybe kind of set to music, but it's not set to music, it's comic books. So it still has to be very rhythmic and very quick. Nice, because, um, but, because you, you are recovering part of the, for example, the captions uh, that used to be like, uh, and in a different part of the city, those uh, have been kind of lost for, for quite some time. And this is an interesting mm -hmm. way of uh, reusing this kind of, res repurposing this kind of re resource, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. All right, so, uh, Gilberto Sico, I know that you have more questions. Who wants to go first? Yeah, uh, just uh, two, two questions uh, that I think that may be pretty quite related. Uh, the first is uh, when you get the, the call uh, from your editor and she told you, do you want to write uh, Quantum and Woody? What was the first thing that came through your to your mind? Um, I, <laughs> well, I mean, whenever I found out that Heather was working at Valiant, like whenever that news was announced, I was quite honestly being like, I hope she's working on Quantum and Woody and I hope she calls me to work on Quantum and Woody. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, so and then happened. Um, 
Uh, I actually, I, I tried to get, I tried to work on Kwame and Woody earlier. I, I pitched um, for what became James Asmus's version. Um, he got not me. His was way better than what I came up with then. I want to be very clear. Like my old pitch was terrible, but I have been wanting to do this for a very long time. And second is uh, once you get to, to work that, uh, you get the, the, the job and uh, you get your pitch and everything that comes with it. And uh, we, we have seen that uh, from the first days to the previous uh, volume of the, the book, that the, the characters are turning into a normal superhero, well, uh, comic book characters, that they are turning grimmier and I know more like uh, against the world and all the angry all the time and uh, at odds uh, with each other. And uh, original, uh, originally they, they weren't that way. Are you mm -hmm. planning to turn them or have you uh, talked with your, edi uh, your editor and uh, have come to the, we would like to be one, the quantum man will be Everybody, everybody I know is, uh, they are not Superman or Batman or Spider-Man or Iron Man, but they are pretty solid characters that have been around for more than 20 years, something like that, almost 30 years. And uh, the, do you, do you have, uh, do you, would you wish to go back to the priest uh, bright days where they are brighter, uh, person with powers as you uh, describe them? Or do you vision to to write them in a way that they are turning into go fuck yourself? I don't want to plan it with you anymore, and we are turning into as you described very wisely, meaningless energy. <laughs> um, I mean, I I think like the, that we. Hello, hello. Uh, you're breaking a little bit, uh, Christopher. Are you still with us? No, I'm sorry. Yes, I am. Ah, excellent. Hi. Excellent. Are we okay? Yes, let yeah. me see. I'm, I'm, let me move my laptop a little bit and see if it's catching my Wi-Fi a little bit better. Okay. Oh, no. Also, you you are in good company. You you have Doctor Magnilla. Well, in your picture that was uh, before. Sorry. Go on. Did he did he slid into frame for a second? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, 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 okay. yeah. you said your profile picture, but uh, go ahead. Oh, the oh my my plushie. I've I've got him here too. Here he is. <laughs> yeah, that's the picture. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I feel like the characters need to always be growing, but it's like, I mean, that's the thing with these characters. Like, you always need to be widening what they can become while also still taking it back to uh, a status quo in this way. And, like, Honestly, with four issues, we are barely at the first part of that journey. Um, so, yeah. Um, anywhere I want to take them is well in the future. Um, that would be anything interesting on that path. But for now, it's just like, yeah, I just want to make them both really um, sympathetic while also goofy. And uh, I just want to show off any like all these aspects of their life that you haven't seen before, because like so much of their stories have been focused on like what's going on with the murder of their dad and their personal history and all that stuff. Cool. 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 Uh, Siko, you have uh, another question, right? Yeah. Uh, we will have uh, more interaction with the goats. <laughs> yeah. The goat. Yes. We have got big plans for the goat. You have to. I was. They made it very clear to me. The goat has to be a big part of it. Um, that said, we're playing the goat very slow, very slow build up with the goat. When I was saying about how like love contains stories, but there's a longer thing happening. The longer thing is with the goat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, another question. Uh, the characters uh, of. Quantum and Goody were uh, based on Woody Harrison and Wesley Snipes. You right. have to to take an actual version of that character. Who which actor should it be? Who would okay. you cast? Uh, uh, I, know, I, know. I know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I know. All right. Um, 
this these people are not as famous as Woody Harrelson uh, and Wesley Snipes, but I love them. Um, so for Woody, um, I really like John Early. Um, John Early is on the TBS show Search Party, and he really has that kind of like um, very laissez-faire sort of con artist vibe. Um, he's one of my favorite comedians, um, and I and he's blocked. Um, <laughs> too. Okay. Are, you, are we are we putting him on screen? Are we? Are we I believe show that uh, it's uh, that's it him, right? That's John yeah. Early. Yes, that's him. That's that's him. Uh, I'm John in the Early. Preview there. Elliot Goss on uh, So I would love him uh, for Woody, or Woody. and uh, for Quantum. Um, I think I want. I forget his name, but he's the actor who plays Cheaty on The Good Place. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Uh, because he's so serious and we saw him on the good place when he took his shirt off he's pretty buff too yeah. um so yeah that is my ideal quantum movie there he is that's there's my quantum okay oh you you got a picture yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and actually we actually have him on the line so let's welcome him <laughs> no, no, I hey, hey, that will be a good surprise right <laughs> uh, william jackson harper he's here All right. <laughs> there you are all right, all right. So uh, let's go for the final uh, final round of questions. Uh, Gilberto? Yeah, uh, every time that Quantum and Woody pops up on the on the bookshelves and on the stores or online on Diamond, the catalog, it, it seems that after number seven or eight, there's a valiant crossover with Bloodshot, Death of Man War, <laughs> uh, and all the characters. Yeah. Are you prepared for something like that? Dead no. Match. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. They haven't. They haven't told me anything about that. They have. They have. I. I asked whenever it first came on board. I'm like, am I ever gonna have to do that? <laughs> no. But I also know that this will change at the drop of a hat. Um, I'm not. I'm not prepared for that. I mean, I'll do it. I can improvise. I'm. I'm ready to go. And I know those characters. I am ready for a quantum and ninjack comic. Like, let's do that. Um, you know, I'm ready for Archer, Archer and Woody, uh, <laughs> uh but no, we, we haven't thought about it at all at this point. But are you, are you worried that that's the sort of stuff that comes, uh, every time that Quantum and Woody get relaunched, right? That, yeah, okay. of course. No, I've, I've, I've read all the comics. I, I know that that could happen. That said, it seems like Valiant has got like some really cool new publishing strategies. I, they're keeping their lines super tight. Um, I think they're maybe trying to buck trends whenever they can. And it seems like the, the company all really works together in a way that I haven't experienced with other comic companies necessarily. Um, so I don't think a surprise crossover will happen the way that, say, like, when I was doing Gwenpool, they were like, do you want to do a Civil War II crossover? Like, just kind of popped up on me. Like, do you want to do that for issue five? And I was like, not really. Like, okay, you don't have to, but, um, yeah, I don't see that coming as a surprise to me the way that it might with a Marvel or a DC book. Or, like you said, previous uh, runs of Quantum Woody with the Hyatt. All right, all right. And, Siko, final question from your side. Uh, um, I would like to know uh, what else are coming from Christopher Hastings. I know that a uh, Marvel book is this, uh, in April, no? Released oh, in... yes, How to Read Comics. <laughs> Why How to Read Comics? Do we have How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, How to Write <laughs> Marvel Comics the, the Marvel Way by Stan Lee, but yeah. How to Read Them? Why? <laughs> All right, I'm looking, I'm looking at my bookshelf right now. I'm trying to find, okay. So, uh, you guys know this book, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually so, have it, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, How to Read Comics. So, this is Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. Um, a crucial book. A thick book uh, on how to read comics. Uh, and so, what we're doing is we're taking a lot of that crucial information and we're boiling it down and we're making it a little bit more accessible with Spider-Man and um, it's basically like we're helping teach 
uh, kids or people who have never really read comics before, sort of the mechanics of and the language of comics. There's a lot of stuff that you know we 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 are also fully versed in comics. There's so much of the actual language of the panels of the artwork interacting with the word balloons, with all the stuff that we kind of take for granted that happens in between the panels, the interactivity of the comic book, fact that like we are moving time forward in this illusion as we read the panels from left to right. Like the movement of time, unlike video is up to us reading the book. And so there's all this stuff that like, if you have maybe never read a comic book before and these days, it's maybe a little bit harder to get your hands on comics, depending um, can seem a little bit foreign to you. And so this book is going to help lay out the very basics with also like a really fun Spider-Man Mysterio story happening in there. But also beyond that first issue, when we're literally just teaching the basics of reading comics, the second issue is then how comics are made. The third issue is history of comics. The fourth issue gets into sort of how the comic gets to you, the reader. So there's more to it than just literally like reading words, looking at pictures. Um, I do understand that that title (laughs) invites the question, what the hell do you mean how to read comics? Um, But I didn't title title it, but I was happy to take the challenge. There you have it. And also, uh, if I am allowed to do a shameless plug, uh, the first time that I had the chance to, to talk with Christopher, it was an interview that uh, actually uh, I believe that serves for the purpose uh, at least to focusing uh, your talents in uh, using the comic page. And it was precisely an interview that we had uh, before for when you were writing uh, Wempool. And it was titled actually the interview Breaking the Fourth Wall, where you show you us that, that, that you could use uh, the, the different elements uh, like the page with somebody who is actually uh, a, car- a comic book character, but who is outside of this world and has a better understand- understanding of this world. So who better uh, who, uh, than the guy who wrote this to explain all of us how the, the, the comic media works? <laughs> and uh, that's li- they, Listen, that's why they hired me to do it. They literally told me that. <laughs> They're like, because of Gwenpool, you get to write this book. <laughs> I was like, great. I love talking about this stuff all the time. Yes, please. <laughs> All right, excellent, excellent. And uh, hopefully they 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 went to you. They they arrived to you with a, a suitcase with a lot of money. Like, okay, uh, you know your deal. Here's a deal. So please take the money and make us more more money with this title. So hopefully, yeah, that, no that's no, no bigger a suitcase than usual. Uh, okay, that's good. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, we're pretty much uh, uh, about to end uh, this transmission. Uh, some comments that we had. Uh, the, the people from Periscope uh, who were at the, at, the, at, the, at the backup channel, who actually was the main channel in this occasion, uh, th- there were some commentaries uh, from Jaime Rosales. Uh, he's a regular from the show. He's also a patron of this particular show. Uh, he's asking uh, if the comic book that, well, the, the, the guide for how to read um, comic books will include uh, any other uh, characters besides the people from uh, from Marvel. And he actually mentions, I, I will do like the interpretation, he asks about the Capulinita or a wrestling special. And I, uh, uh, Capulinita is a character that you won't understand. It's a Mexican character from all the comic books. And uh, we also have a tradition with comic books with wrestlers in Mexico. I don't know why. It's not if, like if it was something from our culture. So would you be also focusing on these different kind of characters? Given that it's uh, something published by Marvel, <laughs> uh, and how to read, uh, yeah, 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 comics the Marvel way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are, are you going to talk about different characters in a, a publication from Marvel that are from Marvel? Well, I believe that we know the the answer for that. But that's... Seems like you guys know the answer to this question. I mean, uh, yeah, no, it's all Marvel characters, um, and and. Um, in in, uh, in in Mexico, right? It's like there's like a licensing deal between Marvel and another publisher, right? Yeah, yeah. They are being yeah. published right now yeah. with uh, Editorial Televisa, who also has uh, the rights from different it's different kind of companies. Of right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 There you go. Uh, so no, it's just, <laughs> just Marvel characters. All right. But I was. Oh thinking... God, I would love to write like a uh, you know a Mexican wrestler comic, especially with Spider-Man in it. That would be amazing. Oh, there they are. 
Dr. Mangninja versus Kemo Nito. Yeah. <laughs> there you are. There you have it. <laughs> there you have that. That's, that's actually a crossover. You, you know what, uh, Christopher? We actually could, ha could have done the, the trick that I'm going to handle Dr. Mangninja to you, and then I, 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 I just put it like Break this. Break the wall. Break the wall, Something please. Something like that, and then you receive it by the other way. No, no, no. That's... Uh... Oh, oh, it's my oh, There we go. Oh, he came in. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. Oh, his tag fell off. Yeah. I, I, I can trust it because it's in good hands. After all, you are his creator. Hold on. Let me, let me hand him back to you. Here you all go. right. All right. Uh, oh. oh. There we go. Excellent. Uh, uh, I, I think it's our, actually our, secret. Our... Oh, that's great. You got his tag back. <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, uh, people, in case that uh, you want to get in touch with uh, Christopher Heising, well, of, of course, buy his comics. That's that's the best way to get in touch with him, <laughs> with his works. Or a one-way uh, communication. Exactly. <laughs> he, will, he will appreciate it. Exactly. Uh, uh, however, you can also get in touch uh, in, in Twitter. Uh, you can find him in twitter.com uh, slash Dr. Hastings, what he, where he's also um, promoting, the, obviously, uh, a lot of his work. Uh, uh, doesn't matter if it's uh, from uh, main editorials or if it's an independent uh, project, like the, some some that you have been releasing uh, from 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 the last uh, couple of years. And yeah, sometimes I, I'll draw web comics. I'll just put on there for fun. Yeah, ac and yeah. actually, in, in your Instagram account, I'm just realizing because you you pretty much you just finished the Wario story, right? Oh, Wario, yeah, I remember yeah, that yeah. One. Okay, so you can find it in, in a lot of mediums. And remember that also, uh, and it's uh, the purpose of this uh, this talk, go and buy Quantum and Woody. Uh, the issue three is going to be released in uh, March 25th. Uh, this is actually Ooh, the, 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 the cover. So you, you have been warned. You have... Uh, if you don't have money, you still can save for a couple of weeks, so you can you can get it in there. <laughs> but also, if you want to listen to the sensational humor that you have, they can listen to you. Can you tell us a little oh. bit about uh, this magnificent podcast? What is it about? Okay, so um, Rude Tales of Magic is a podcast that I would make with my friends. And uh, the basic level is that we play Dungeons & Dragons together, um, and we record it. But we're all comedians. We're all improvisers. And um, we also have uh, an incredible producer editing the podcast. So there's like, there's all sorts of like great music and sound effects, and it's edited really well. So you don't just like listen to us kind of chattering while we're rolling dice and stuff like that. Like it's a well produced show based around a Dungeons and Dragons world. Um, and in the show, I play um, a disgraced aristocratic um archmage who has been cursed to be a skeleton but i wear like a big poofy wig and i wear fancy clothes um yeah <laughs> there you and, I, and, I have, and i have a british accent while i'm doing it uh, one question uh, you are wear, wearing all those clothes while recording right because it's only on audio and so to get in character then you, you have, have to get in character yeah. you have to get in character yes of course um i also shed uh, every bit of my flesh to get down to my skeletal form when I get in the booth. That's the only way to you do see? it. <laughs> that, Thank you. True, I'm so glad commitment. you appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. You get it. <laughs> true commitment. All right. And uh, Gilberto, in case that the audience who is in here wants to support us in different mediums, what's the way to support these kind of interviews that we have with very talented people? Yeah, you can support us at uh, patreon.com slash destripando. We would really appreciate it. Uh, this, all these interviews, all this uh, part of the show uh, comes uh, to you thanks to all of our, our Patreons. And if you were a Patreon, you, were, uh, you received a notification like two days before. And if you are, as, uh, you are not a Patreon, uh, you just find out by listening to the uh, transmission of the podcast in the regular day. So you may have pushed up, uh, the pause button and run to this uh, transmission and then go back to the regular transmission of the podcast. But we would really appreciate if you support us at uh, patreon.com slash destripan. There you have it. And uh, well, uh, thanks to all our patrons who are supporting this show and uh, thanks to all the people who have been supporting us. Uh, even watching this, uh, like Jaime Rosales, like uh, Jeff, uh, who, were, uh, join, uh, who, who were with us with the, during the transmission. Remember, remember that this will be also available with, uh, as an audio version for the, in, in the regular feed. And of course, it will be like in a few minutes, it will also be released on our Facebook and our YouTube channels. So don't worry, you, you weren't missing uh, the show. 
uh, because we want to share the the excellent humor and the incredible talent of Christopher Hastings with everybody who, who can enjoy it. Christopher, thanks a lot for your time, man. It's always a pleasure talking with you. Oh, I, I love talking to you. Thank you very much. I, I, I hope to come back many more times in the future. Come with it. We, we can make you a regular. We, we, don't, we can't offer you as much money, as, many, as much money <laughs> as Marvel, but we have cookies. <laughs> oh, well, that's all they pay me in, so that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, thanks to everybody. Let's go to the uh, to the outro, and then we will perhaps have some cookies. <laughs>